boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hi guys. So I was talking to my friends Isabel and Owen the other night. Well, it was my night. It was their morning. And Isabel picked out our next book. It is Junie B. Jones has a monster under her bed. And Owen suggested that I read the words exactly as Junie B says them. That means bad words at all and all. So sorry, mom. This is for you, Owen and Isabel. It's Junie B Jones has a monster under her bed. And I decided to go to this park here in Thailand and read here so you can see some of the sights. So the first two chapters I'm reading in this like basket thing. I don't know. Junie B. Jones has a monster under her bed by Barbara Park. It was written in 1997. So if you are 23 years old or older, you were alive when this book was written. Starts out with a picture. Chapter one, the cheese man. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I like B and that's all. I am in the grade of afternoon kindergarten. Today we got our school pictures taken at that place. School pictures is when you wear your bestest dress and you go to the cafeteria and the cheese man is there. He makes you say cheese, only I don't actually know why. Then he takes a picture of you and your mother has to buy them or else you will get your feelings hurt. School pictures is a racket, I think. I wear my new dress with a dinosaur on the front. A dinosaur, huh? Said the cheese man. I smoothed my skirt very lovely. Yes, I said, it is a Tyrannosaurus dotty. You mean Tyrannosaurus Rex, he said. No, I mean Tyrannosaurus dotty, because Rex is a boy and dotty is the girl, I explained. The cheese man stood behind his camera. Say cheese, he told me. Yeah, only guess what? I don't actually know why I have to say that word. Because what's cheese got to do with it, I asked. Cheese makes you smile, said the cheese man. I shook my head. Not me. Cheese doesn't make me smile, I said. Sorry, motorcycle. Because sometimes I eat a cheese sandwich for lunch. And I don't even giggle when I swallow that thing. <sighs> the cheese man did a big breath. Could you please just say it, he asked. Yes, I said. I can please just say it. Only don't forget to tell me when you're ready. Because one time my grandpa Frank Miller was taking my picture and he didn't tell me he was ready. And then one of my eyes turned out open and the other one turned out closed. I made a face to show him. See, see my eyes? See how one of them is open and the other one is? All of a sudden, the cheese man took my picture. My mouth came wide open at him. Hey, how come you did that? How come you took my picture? Because I wasn't even ready yet. The cheese man just kept on clicking his camera. Pretty soon he looked at the next person in line. Next, he said, I stamped my foot. Yeah, only I wasn't ready, I tell you. And so I need another turn, I said. Just then my teacher came over and she pulled me away from there. She sat me next to her on a bench. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. said, settle down to me. Then me and her watched the rest of the children get their pictures taken. My bestest friend named Lucille went next. She had a blue satin ribbon in her hair. My Nana says this ribbon brings out the blue in my eyes, she told the cheese man. She opened them real wide. See them? See the color? They are Robin's Egg blue with just a hint of lavender. The cheese man sucked his cheeks. He was getting f frustrated in him, I think. Could you please just say cheese, he grouched. Lucille smiled real big with all her teeth. Cheese, she sang very loud. Cheese, 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 cheese. Then she kept on singing cheese till the cheese man said, knock it off. After she was done, Lucille skipped over to me and Mrs. Did you see me, she asked. Did you see how good I said cheese? That's because I'm gonna be a model when I grow up. So I already know how. She fluffed her fluffy hair. The camera is my friend, she said. Mrs. rolled her eyes way up to the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. After that, it was time for the class picture. The class picture is when all of room nine lies up, lines up in two rows. The biggie kids stand in the back. 
and the shorty kids stand in the front. I'm a shorty kid, only that is nothing to be ashamed of. I stood next to Polly Allen Puffer. He looked at my, he looked very admiring at my dinosaur dress. Dinosaurs bite people's heads off, he said. I did a frown. Yeah, only they don't even scare me because there's no such thing as dinosaurs anymore, I told him. So, there's still such things as monsters that can bite your head off, said Polly Allen Puffer. A monster lives right under your bed, I bet. My big brother says that everybody has a monster under their bed. He poked his finger at me. I don't have a monster under my bed. Even you, Junie B. Jones, he said. I got shivers on my arms. No, I do not either, Polly Allen Puffer, I said. Yes, you do, he said back. My brother is in seventh grade. And he says the monster waits till you're asleep. Then he crawls up next to you and he lies down on your pillow and he practices fitting your head in his mouth. I covered up my ears, but Polly Allen Puffer just talked louder. I can even prove it, he said. Didn't you ever wake up with a drool spot on your pillow? I thought real hard. Yeah, so? So where do you think it came from, he asked. It came from the monster under your bed, that's where. It was monster drool, Junie B. Jones. Oh guys, I have to tell you a story. When I was flying to Fiji, on one of our flights, I had to sit next to another man that wasn't Mr. Sean. And when we were landing, I woke up and my head was on his shoulder and I had drooled on him. It was so embarrassing. It was not a monster drooling, it was all me. I shook my head real fast. No, it was not, Polly Allen Puffer. You stop saying that and I mean it. He raised up his eyebrows. Well, where did it come from then? You don't drool on your pillow, do you? You're not a baby, are you, he said. No, don't call me that. I am not a baby, I yelled. Polly Allen Puffer crossed his arms. So where did the drool come from then, he asked again. I don't know, I said, but my daddy told me there's no such thing as monsters. So what? Daddies have to say that, said Polly Allen Puffer. That's so you go to sleep at night and not bother them. He squinted his eyes at me. What do you think daddies and mommies sleep together in the same room anyway? It's so they can protect each other from the monster or else their heads might get chewed off. Just then I wrinkled up my nose at that terrible thought. Then I hanged out my tongue and I did a sick face. And guess what? The cheese man took the class picture. Poor Junie B. Chapter two, just say right. After school pictures, we went back to room nine. Then I put my head down on my table. There's no such thing as monsters. There's no such thing as monsters. I whispered just to myself, because my very own daddy told me that and he wouldn't lie to me, probably. Mrs. said for me to sit up in my chair. She passed out work for us to do. It was called printing our letters. Only I didn't actually feel like doing that. I tapped on my bestest friend named Lucille. Guess what, Lucille? There's no such thing as monsters. There's really, really not. And so a monster doesn't even live under my bed. Probably, right, Lucille, right? Shh, I'm doing my letters, she said. Let, yes, Lucille, I know you are doing your letters. Only I just wanted to tell you about the monster because he's not even real, right? Lucille didn't say right. How come you're not saying right, Lucille? Just say right. Okay, just say monsters aren't real and I won't bother you anymore. All of a sudden, Lucille did a mad breath. <laughs> now look what you made me do, Junie B. You ruined my big G. I told you not to bother me. She quick grabbed her paper and run to Mrs. to fix it. I tapped my fingers on my table. Then I turned around and looked behind me. I smiled at a boy named Crybaby William. Guess what, William? There's no such thing as monsters. And so a monster doesn't even live under my bed. Probably, right, William, right, right? William moved his seat away from me. I followed him with my chair. I think I'm right, don't you think, William? A monster really doesn't live under my bed, does he? Plus also, he doesn't put my head in his mouth. William slided his chair away some more. I scooted after him. Just say right, okay, William? Say there's not a monster under my bed and I'll be on my way. William picked up his chair. He carried it all the way to the middle of the floor. Birds are loud. 
That's how come I had to carry my chair to the middle of the floor too. I sat down and smiled, very sweet. Right, William? I'm right, aren't I? I said, only too bad for me because just then I felt hands on my shoulders. I looked up, it was Mrs. I did a gulp. Hello, how are you today? I said, kind of nervous. M Mrs. zoomed my chair back to my table. It was not fun. I quick picked up my pencil. Guess what? I'm gonna do my work now, I said. Plus also, I'm not even going to talk because I don't actually like this. I don't actually like anyone in this area. <laughs> Mrs. tapped her foot at me. Love your shoes, I said real soft. Her foot kept tapping. Only just then a very great thing happened and it is called the bell rang for the end of school. I hurried up out the door. Then me and my other bestest friend named Grace run to the bus together. Grace, Grace, guess what? There's no such thing as monsters. And so I don't even have one under my bed. Probably, right, Grace, right? That Grace didn't say right. That's how come I grabbed her by the shoulders and I jiggled and I jiggled her because I was fed up with these people, that's why. How come you won't say right, Grace? How come nobody will say right? Because I'm getting at the very end of my rope with this thing. That Grace took her hands, took my hands off of her. I can't say right because a monster really might live under your bed, Junie B, she said. My eyes got big and wide at her. No, Grace, no, do not say that. Do not say a monster might live under my bed because that cannot even be true or else I would have spotted that guy by now. No, no you wouldn't, she said. My big sister said that monsters can turn themselves invisible when you look at them. And so that's how come nobody sees them. That Grace looks serious at me. That makes sense, don't you think? Huh, Junie B, right? Just then, my throat got, throat got dry. My stomach got the shakies. I looked out the window very upset. And I didn't say right. All right, guys. That was our first two chapters. We will read the second two chapters another time. Bye. I wonder what that beeping noise is. <laughs>